Welcome back. The debate over casino gambling in Texas continues to grow. We're joined today by a great roundtable. John Montford is here from the pro casino lobby. Let Texans decide. Rob Kohler joins us from the anti gambling Christian Life Commission and Tim Eaton is here from the Austin American Statesman. Welcome everyone. Thank so you. first I want to talk about this survey that KXAN and Survey USA put out statewide. Uh, we polled 500 Texans and it looks like 64% of the people we polled said they would support getting casinos here in Texas. What do you think about those numbers? I think that's accurate. I think even a greater number support having the issue on the ballot once and for all for determination by the people of Texas. Rob, what does it say when you hear that number and still you've got those lawmaker opponents that won't even hear this issue? Well, uh, you know, what it says is what we've seen in, in the previous sessions is, is a new session starts and a, a poll pops out and says everybody wants, uh, you know, casinos. Uh, what we point to is that, uh, you know, that type of attitude doesn't carry the day whenever members are running in primaries or whenever they uh, are running general elections. And, uh, you know, ultimately that's a gold standard in surveys. And you can have as, you know, in my view, humbly, you know, you can have many of those you won't pop out during, uh, after the gunfires at the legislative session. But, uh, you know, let some folks run in those primaries in those districts and say, you know, I'm going to do this if you send me here to Austin. Tim, you've been covering this issue for a while. Is it really, you know, about getting that bill to the committee and, and out of the committee? It seems like it's not really happening each session. Well, you know, one of the things that's interesting about the poll is, um, and this is your poll, I believe, right, um, is that it was done by the folks that uh, used to work for Ted Cruz. And I know that's piqued a lot of interest among freshman members, particularly um, freshman conservative members, that is, uh, I guess, is, is, uh, is a pollster that they trust. Mm -hmm. Well, this is actually a, a brand new poll the KXAN just put out okay. last week, yeah, but very similar numbers to mm -hmm. what Mr. Monford's uh, poll was like as well. That poll also said 76% of Texans that we polled wanted a chance to actually vote on this as a ballot measure in November. Is that kind of what you're hearing from Texans? Yeah, the, the, the poll we, that you spoke of indicated more than 82% of Texans wanted to vote on this issue. So why would anybody be afraid of letting the people vote on this issue? It's been around a long time. and. You know, people, Texans are fiercely independent. They don't like the government telling them what they can or can't do with their money as long as they're not hurting anybody else. So where's, where's the concern about letting people vote decide this thing the democratic way? Now, do you have a response? Well, I agree. I, I agree 100% with Senator Montford. Uh, folks, folks should get the opportunity to vote. And, and, and I believe to imply that they, that they haven't, um, you know, isn't, isn't accurate. They, they vote. They vote when they send people to the legislature. And so absolutely folks should get the right to vote on it. And, and if they feel strongly about that, whenever folks are running, uh, you know, pick your candidate that's going to run, run for the House or the Senate and uh, make sure that, uh, that he or she, she says what you want them to hear. Surely those numbers, you know, would be different when you're talking about picking someone and then picking an issue. Well, you know, I, I think what's interesting ab ab about, you know, polls like these is, you know, I think if you put almost any issue in front of a voter and, and say, would you like to choose or would you like the legislature to choose? More often than not, I think they're going to say, we would like to choose. I think if it's a pothole in the middle of the street, you say, do you want to choose to fix it or do you want to have your state rep? They want to say, I, I want to fix that pothole. I want that decision in my hands. It seems like one of the biggest concerns we hear about getting casinos in Texas, uh, gambling addiction. Uh, that, that seems like it keeps rising to the surface. I know places like Louisiana, they actually put some of the tax revenue that the state earns back into gambling addiction treatment. Is that something that you feel like might help alleviate some of those concerns if we did that in Texas? Well, sure. Look. You're surrounded. We've got gaming problems, uh, uh, you, you know, that are going unattended to in Texas because you have had the proliferation of eight liners. And Rob, if you really are against gaming or gambling, you ought to target the illegal operations going on now. They're not contributing a dime to the state treasury. We're hemorrhaging two and a half, three billion dollars a year to New Mexico, Oklahoma, in Louisiana, our people are going up there to gamble, and they're going up there to spend their money, and they come back, those that have a problem, we're saddled with really no resources to do anything about it. So I think one thing that we will focus on is certainly addressing any issue of gaming addiction in the proposed legislation once we get up and rolling. Is it worth that balance? I mean, making 
people possibly get addicted to casinos and then having to help pay for that? Well, what business would what business would you smile upon that's coming to a state that says, well, we can give you some money, but by the way, uh, you know, for a handful of folks or a certain percentage, it's not going to be fun for them. In fact, it's going to hurt them. And there's some smart people, you know. Look, the question isn't whether bad things come or, or, or uh, if some folks get, get in trouble with this type of gambling. Folks on both sides of the issue, I mean, you go to Penn Gaming's website or you go to GTEC's website, on the front page is, you know, for some folks, this isn't fun. You know, we agree. Where the rub is is how much is that? And, and I tell people, you put a room, you put 50 people in a room and raise your hand and say, you know, who stole your wife's credit card this weekend and ran up $2,000 on the Internet poker and hadn't told her yet? People aren't going to raise their hand and say, yeah, I did. You know, it, 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 what's important to know is that folks on both sides of this argument agree. You know, for some people, uh, they can't handle it. Their disagreement is what the cost is. Uh, and I agree with the senator. Uh, you know, we supported uh, Dan Flynn's bill to get rid of eight-liners. We uh, supported Dan Patrick's uh, attempt to try to amend it on the Senate floor to get rid of eight-liners. Uh, but... You know, just like you, you don't get rid of eight liners by legalizing slot machines, and that's you know that's where there's maybe a disagreement. Oh, look, people are going to gamble. I mean, you, you and I are never going to stop that fierce Texas independence attitude. They're just fellow Texans. So why not regulate it, sanction it, license it, and tax it instead of what we have now, which is virtually chaos. You've got a lot of unregulated, unlicensed stuff going on. You can bet your life savings two blocks from the state capitol, for heaven's sake. So, you know, I think it's time. The people of Texas are smart enough to figure this out. We want to continue to hemorrhage money and keep the problems here. Are we going to, you know, let the people of Texas decide whether they want expanded gaming or not? Why would you be afraid to let the people vote on the issue, well, Rob? Well, I, I'm not, John. They now do vote. No, You're I'm not. afraid. You're afraid they, to put they, it out there. They, let me they, tell you this. Well, let, let, I, me, want you to, I want all of the organizations who oppose this to file who's Put footing their tab, okay? Oh, I, I, and how much of this money for groups like yours, and I respect you and I respect your group, but y'all don't have to file a thing about where your money comes from. I'll tell you what, John, I'll go on TV right now and I'll lay out my income tax for the last two years. And challenge all and, and, the people. And yours too. Okay, let's, well, let's lay out I'll, the I'll let's, take your bet on that. Let's, let's challenge income tax. all the people who are against this and ask them, where's your money coming from? Are you being funded out of Oklahoma? Heavens and heavens no. That's well, outrageous. In fact, well, no, it's not outrageous. It is because, outrageous. It's no. not true. Well, maybe for your organization it's not true, but let's, well, you know, there are a lot of organizations that are vocally against this. We want to know where their money's coming from. We I, had to file our reports. I, I, I think everybody that's for or against an issue in politics ought to have to disclose who's supporting them and where their money is Absolutely. coming from. Absolutely. So well, where's, where's the beef? What well, are you afraid of? Well, this, this is the opportunity for you to name those organizations that you know are taking Oklahoma Indian, Indian money. Name them. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you throw it out there, yeah, uh, they don't I, I can tell you 100% I mean, that, that the people that know, I represent Oh, don't. no, they hide behind the shield of a nonprofit. That's not right. Well, let's get the cards out on the table, and let's really have a, a full and free debate. Look, the people of Texas are not stupid. They don't like to be told what they can or can't do with their money. And frankly, I've got more confidence in them than that. If they vote it down, fine. If they vote it for it, fine. John, let's live with the results. Well, let's talk well, about let, what we're saying, yeah, let, what they can and let, can't do Let's take with a step money. back and just understand what we're talking about here. We're talking about amending the Constitution. You need to really look at, you know, and I'm not an attorney, but how did something get into our Constitution? Folks, once upon a time, who, whenever gambling was very prevalent, agreed that, you know what, if we're going to live together orderly, there's a couple of things we shouldn't do. So the idea that you can amend the Constitution, it's got to pass through the legislative process and be vetted. What I'd, in, what I'd encourage you to do, instead of just saying, by, bypass that little problem of talking about it and you guys running it through your filters, just let the people decide. You know, talk, talk about do, what... Hey, Rob, it's got to go both places. You've got to have 100 votes in the House, 21 votes in the Senate. It's got to double... A double gauge, a double checkpoint. You got It's like running high hurdles. You got to get it out of the house. You got to get it out of the Senate. And then you got to submit it to a vote of the people. What's so? But, but what Senator, is the you're problem not with that. But what? Senator, you're not leading with that argument. Yeah, you're I am leading, leading with, with that argument. argument. All we want another, is people a are vote. being misled. You know, look, all we want is a vote of the people. What, why would you be afraid to let the people of Texas decide uh, this issue? I think it's an affront to their intelligence uh, to say uh, you're not smart enough to figure this well, out. Of what course, they you did. You're trying to trick them, Senator, with that argument. What do you want to use this money for? Things like education, which we have had to cut lately. Say that again? What do you say to those people that want to use this money for things like education that we had to cut lately? I, I, hey, look, whenever we visit with, with these folks at the legislature, 
you know, we're able to say, look, this isn't the first time this idea has popped up. Parimutuel wagering came into the state with all these same promises. Hundreds of millions of dollars, unlimited tax dollars. Right. Are we losing money in Oklahoma? Let me finish. Right. Uh, lottery, same way. Hey, lottery came in with the same with the same promises. Um, and, and here we are again in finance. We're, we're in another lawsuit about funding of education. Well, great debate, guys. I'm going to have to cut you off right there. We are out of time. But thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. And we are going to <laughs> want to hear... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to want to hear from you online. Uh, you can email me your thoughts at josh.hinkle at kxan.com. You can also find me on Twitter at HinkleJ. And be sure to visit the legislative section of kxan.com. You'll find our guide to the legislative process in Texas, our list of the major players, and my blog from the Capitol. It's all, all in our legislative section on kxan.com. Thank you for joining us for In Session In-Depth. Have a great morning.